Hello, welcome to Yarn Lane. My name's John Scott. You might not know me. Um, I've only been here for four hours already on air. But anyway, Yarn Lane, welcome. All everything to do with crochet and knitting. Now, um, there are lots of ways you can get in touch with us. You can send us an email. There you go, studio at yarnlane.com. You can send us a message on Facebook Live. I'm there already. And um, Glenny says, oh, there's lots of you there today. Um, there you go. That's Yarn Lane. Is that, that's not Facebook Live, is it? There you go. There you go. There you go. Facebook slash Yarn Lane TV. Or if you go to our website, website is ready. Here you go. You click on watch, the, watch live. Oh, hang on. We'll get there. There you go. There you go. Click on watch live and you'll get this. There's everything. There, that's how you send a message in there on the right hand side. And then if you go to pre-order, everything from today's show is there. Now, as we play it on air, it will appear on the left hand side. And as if it hasn't been played yet, it'll be on the right hand side in pre-order. Remember, you won't see any of the Sewing Street um, pieces or projects on this website, as in you won't see any of the Yarn Lane ones on the Sewing Street website either. Right, Granny Squares, Granny Squares, Granny Squares, we're going to have a fantastic show. But before I do, now this is the Yarn Lane special, right? We don't do these all the time. It was right at the beginning. Look at these, they're gorgeous. Let me just, shall I put them in the above? There, look, 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 look. $6.99 these are. They are Yarn Lane, oh hang on, you haven't seen them yet. Yarn Lane, special embroidery scissors, yarn design, £6.99. I'll just take that off. Look at that. Aren't they cute? Uh, always lovely as a gift. And they've got a nice weight to them as well, these. Aren't they? Oh, look. Oh, look. They've even got like little knitting needle tabs at the top. Three millimetre, three millimetre. Oh, how brilliant. Aren't they lovely? Isn't that gorgeous? £6.99. You've not seen these for a while, Stuart says afternoon. Looking forward to the hour. Oh, there's so much in this hour, Stuart, I can't tell you. So they are special little scissors. We don't do yarn vein specials very often, so take advantage. Okay, Hannah's found them on the internet elsewhere for £8. Oh, there you go. While you do that, I've just got to sanitise my hands. They're just cute. I just think if you, if, whether you're going to self-gift or whether you're going to buy them as, for a gift for somebody else. Right. Oh, you must be really wondering why I'm surrounded by all this yarn. Well, I shall tell you all about that now. What I'll do is I'll go through everything I've got for sale and then Wendy can get on with her. She's glaring at me now through her, above her glasses like that. Okay, so I've got bundles, right? I've got bundles of yarn. It's double knit yarn. It's gorgeous. Um, it's from Mariner and it is 100% uh, acrylic double knit yarn. Right, so I've got three sizes. I've got three sizes. You see these here? These, uh, we're going to start with petite. Shall I just, where's the best way to put it there? There. There. Petite in light colours. That Look at these, aren't they gorgeous? Great for your granny squares. Hmm? 5 99 and you get a free pattern. And you get a free pattern in there. This is the only bundle I've got that comes with a free pattern, just so you know. So how much is that? 5 99 Now, obviously, there's just the yarn in there. There's nothing else plus the free pattern. They're all 10 grams. Each ball is 10 grams. And look at the lovely colours in there. Beautiful. In fact, you don't get two of any colour, look. Beautiful colours, aren't they? Award-winning yarns, these are. Award-winning yarns. Right, so that's the pale. Did they call it pale? No, what do they call it? Oh, there you go. Quarter of the stock went straight. Wait, no, wait, wait till you see what else I've got. Wait till you see But quarter of the stock went straight into baskets, right? Oh, these, I love these. These, again, are petite. But look at the colours. Look at the colours in this one. Oh, these are just stunning, aren't they? So there you go, it's exactly the same, 5 99 Each uh, ball has 10, do we say 10 grams? 10 grams on them. And you get your free pattern. Now, is that pattern different? Hang on, let's put that the right way. 
Double Knit is Marriott's best-selling yarn. It's 100% acrylic. It'll be the same granny squares, I think. But you do get free. You don't get a free pack with any with any of the other bundles. Just this one. <gasps> Crochet projects, dolls' clothes, dinky knitting. That's a technical term. Beautiful. I love those. So th they are petite, right? Can be machine washed as well. But it's 100% acrylic, of course it can. Five ninety nine. Beautiful. Now, look at this bundle here. Now, your colours may vary slightly, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty of them, and they're all 25 grams. Your colours won't be that different to these. There might just be a couple of replacement ones. This is the next size up. So these, again, these are called your mini. They're the double knit. They're 100% acrylic. Beautiful, aren't they? So now yours might have different things. These are mini, right? These are all mini. They were, used to be called something different, but mini is the new term. So you may get some of the ones with the old label on, but don't worry, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So you get 20... Balls of yarn. Now, with this one, you don't get a pattern. You just get oh, 11 99 for all of those. 20 of them. They're 25 grams each. Beautiful. A double knit, a crunch print acrylic made by Mariner. Gorgeous colours. They can be knitted with, but we're going to use them crochet today. Okay, that's gorgeous. How many of they must have flown into baskets, surely? Oh, okay. Loads of people on the phone line. Gorgeous. Right, okay. So those are that's your mini bundle. Okay, the quantities we have of these bundles today are the largest quantities we've ever had for Yarn Lane. Okay, in the same breath, we're also saying that it looks like they're all going to sell out at this rate. Just so you know, right? Now, look at this. Look at this. These are 100 gram balls. And look, again, you get 20 of them. Look at the colours. Now, again, you may get alternate something... It won't be massively different. Don't think I'm gonna get, you're going to get lime greens and things like that. It'll be along the same lines. Oh, that's a nice colour, isn't it? Oh, they just have shade numbers that have no colours. These are all 100 gram balls. You get 20 of them. Most popular yarn from Yacht Marin is their double knit. And you get 20 balls of 100 grams. Can You can crochet or you can knit with all of these. I'm over this side because I don't want to start moving into the middle of the table. But look. Oh! We're back. We're back, we're back, we're back. Look. Gorgeous colours, aren't they? Beautiful colours. Okay, so how much is that? £34.99. and pence. 34.99. Right, are you ready? Right. Books. Oh, do I? Oh, yes, yes. Rebecca said this morning, if you buy that bundle, you might need, need a nice bag to keep it all in. <gasps> I love this bag. I think it's gorgeous. It's not PU, it's all cotton. Oh, hang on. So, drawstring, knit and P... Oh, no. Knit and pearl. Knit and pearl. It's not P-U at all. Knit and pearl, isn't it, P-U? Oh, they just missed the end of the thingy off. Oh, no. It hasn't got, uh, no, it's got drawstring inside. Look. There, look. Yeah, get the bundle. Put all those in there. And also, if you look at the print on this fabric, it's knitting. It's knitting. Is it knitting or is it purling? Knitting or purling, one of the two. Might be knit one pearl, one even. Let me have a look at the other side. Oh, no, the other side's plain. <laughs> Half the stock in my petite bundles have all gone, just so you know. 
that's a funny price, isn't it? Thirty ninety nine. Thirty ninety nine. That's gorgeous. Look at the print on the front. Gorgeous. Okay, let's move on because we've got lots to do in this hour. Books. Granny Squares by Susan Pinner. Oh, look at that. You see, this is what this is what my nan used to make all the time. 20 crochet projects with a vintage vibe. Let's put this in. How much is this then? 14.99. 14.99. Oh, look, the thing is, right, if you'd shown these about five, ten years ago, people would have gone, oh, oh, that, now, imagine if that was for sale in one of those boutique, bijou boutiques, you know what I mean? Look, uh, a little sausage dog walked past Hannah on its own, with a crocheted coat on it. My nan only made, she used to make them for the poor people, she said, I don't know who she used to send them off to. Oh, look. I'd not even thought of them like that. It's a nice bed. Uh, oh, look, look, look. Oh, grrr. you see, my nan used to make them, and I used to choose the ones I liked the best, because some of them... Yes. Oh, look! Sorry. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> oh, I love the poof. And then the bolster cushion's nice as well. I don't like a bolster. Yeah, I don't like a bolster myself. <gasps> oh, this is beautiful. Look, and then look, everything is so simply explained. <laughs> Stop taking the mickey out of me today, you two, in there. Have you heard them, Wendy, going on and on? Oh, look. I would like one of these. I'd have to buy one of those first. <gasps> oh! <laughs> and, uh, this can go in your new room, look, because your new room's like this. Look. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> computer case, that one. Notebook cover. Oh, you were talking about making a notebook cover earlier, Paul. For his diary, for his secret diary. Oh, that's nice. Felted flower. Oh, they're lovely, aren't they? But you can make all of these with the bundles that we've got. <gasps> oh, I love this. Hexes, hexes. Oh, and you can make different shapes. Oh, my nan only did squares. <laughs> anyway, shall I move on? Um, uh, Granny Squares, 20 crochet projects with a vintage vibe from Susan Pinner. Oh, Leslie, sorry, Leslie, we don't know, we can't, we can't help you with your basket. What you'll need to do is ring the call centre. They're just around the corner here, they'll, they'll help you. They'll help you. Oh, Stuart's got this book. He says it's great. Pale green, oh, it's stocking stitch. Thank you. The pale green inside the, book, the bag is stocking stitch. Judith says, good morning. Good afternoon, John. Still watching. Love crochet. Still, well, yes. Anyway, so put Granny's. Now, I would have thought they were by the same person because how similar do those books look? This is Emma Varnum, this one. 20 quick and easy crochet projects for. I like the file, fireplace tiles there as well. Yeah. Right here. Oh, Bunting. Oh, look at, I like that one there. Right, hang on then. So this has got. Different projects. Chic cushion, chunky lap blanket, lazy edge blanket. I think the photographer might be the same photographer, because the styling of the photos look very similar, don't they? Cheery coaster. Potholder. Now, you wouldn't think about a crocheted potholder, would you? Stylish table mat. Glasses case. Festival bag. Oh, What? Fingerless mittens. Oh, snug cow, bobble hat. All completely. D oh, a striped beret. Oh, look, rainbow rattle. 
Oh, look, they, I think basically it must be the same. It must be the same publishers just using a different crochet person because the, the format is exactly the same in this book. Yeah, yeah. No, the project's completely different, but I'm just saying the format and the, and the print. Look, this is all the same. I, I imagine it's the same. Um, yeah, editorial house. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. <laughs> no. Yes. Anyway, that's gorgeous. How much is that one? Fourteen ninety nine. The project's completely different. Pro these are more clothing-based. Those are more kind of home-based, aren't they? Okay, so let's move on. Right, shall I show other things as well, and then we can get on with the, with the crocheting. Set of crochet hooks. These are beautiful. Look at these. So these are every size you could possibly need. Two, two and a half, three, all the way up to six millimetre crochet hooks. Aren't they lovely? Gorgeous little case. It does zip up. I just can't get it to zip up now. What would you keep in it, Paul? Yeah. Oh, he's going to keep his crochet hooks in it. That's nice. How much are they? Twenty-six ninety-nine. Beautiful. Right, okay, moving on. I've then got hooks on their own. Zing hook on its own, four and a half millimetre, four and a half millimetre it is. Oh, I've got a four, but that's not zing, that's ginger. Yeah, it does. T-O-Z-W-73. Right, now, I don't know which is right. In the graphics, it says four mil. On the packet, it says four and a half mil. And on the thing, it says four and a half mil. Right, it's four and a half mil. Yeah. So, hang on, what size are you using? Five. Oh, you're... <laughs> Wait, he's using a five. There is a reason for that. Yeah, there's a reason for that. Okay, then, fine. So, four and a half is the Zing one in the purple, the same as the one inside that lovely package. Two ninety nine. I've also got a ginger one here. This is the... Um, FSC Certified Wood Sourced and Well-Managed European... F oh, that's a good... Yeah. Four. It's the four. There are... If, you are, if you're not liking any of the ones I'm showing you here, on the website, if you go to the website, the Yarn Lane website, you'll see all the hooks that we do. Okay? I'll come back to that later. Oh, good question. Um, right, okay, shall we go and do some crocheting then? And then I'll look, because we had a question about are the books in UK or American terminology? So I'll have a read while Wendy's doing her um, stuff. Right, Wendy, so popular. Everything's been so popular. Oh, my word, look at your table. There's loads on I know, it. I know. The price is phenomenal for that, especially the 20, 25 grams, because that's 500. Of, of the yarn? That's 500 grams. Four eleven ninety nine. That's yeah. really good because you would not be able to go in. Is that the mini? That this is one, the mini one. Brilliant. The that's one. a fantastic value and it's really, really nice to work with as well. Oh, that's the one you're using because you've got that I'm green one. I'm using the green one. Yes, Lovely. I'm using the green because I think it's beautiful. And I've made a little, little yes, friend. Yes, we saw that earlier. Little, Have you seen this? <laughs> little there friend. Yes, little friend. Out of the pom poms. We'll come to pom poms later. We will come to them later. Right, can you tell me, with me looking, are they American or English, or do I need to look it up? No, they, the, if it's, you, the lady's quite right in asking, because although you get the same stitch at the end of it, they do have different terms. Yes. Uh, these are, I have read, these are UK ones. I'm just checking that the, the one you want to look for is the treble. So, it, but I did look earlier. But I have had a cup of coffee since Wendy's then. Wendy's got the Granny Squares book at the moment. Yes, I have. Um, right, I'm just seeing what they do. So increasing, decreasing. Just, right, there we go. Well, treble this lady's yes. wrong. Great. Oh, yes, God. so the treble crochet, they're doing yarn over. Yes, so they are UK terms. And I just Okay, look at the other one as well. I so in Granny Squares, the they're definitely UK terms in this one. I would imagine they are both. I would imagine they are both. Okay, Granny Squares weekend is the one we're looking at now, which is this right. one. Oh, right, yeah. UK and US differences. Oh, OK, so they've actually put it in here, UK and US. They've done the two different terms here. Oh, brilliant. So let's have a look. Yeah, double treble. Yeah, so this right. book has got it in double in both terms, UK and US. Treble. No, again, the picture's in here um, for a treble crochet. They're putting yarn over in first. So, yes, they're the UK ones. OK, yeah. 
They, but it's, the it pictures is, are UK, but they've actually got written down UK and US. It's very, them. they're very simple, but as long as whichever one that you start working with, you stick to. Yes. Because what we call a um, double crochet, the US call a single crochet, and our single, so it's, they and it's are also different. The, the, when um, Sam Breed launched it, the trebles are different. They are, yeah. yes. So, granny squares. Yeah. I was so excited when Rebecca said that I was doing granny squares because um, I've mentored an awful lot of people and they all say, oh, I can't do it because my work's not straight. And what they're trying to do is start working in rows. Now, any accomplished crochet out there will say that actually working in rows is one of the hardest things to do oh, okay. in crochet because you have to remember about your tension. You have to make sure that your stitch count is absolutely spot on every single row, otherwise you start doing that if you lose them and you start doing that if you add more on. Mm -hmm. And you have to worry about your tension as well. So I would say to anyone, if you're thinking, I would like to do this, granny squares is the way to go. I would always recommend someone to start with a granny square. Yep. Yes, I'm going to be starting with a treble, which you think that you would progress. And all treble means is the height of the stitch. In crochet, unlike knitting, the stitches, they're all different names and they're all different heights. Right. So a double crochet is tiny and then a treble gets bigger and then you can do treble, double treble, 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 so that you've got really long stitches. Right. Um, but it's not difficult. It's all about what you do with the yarn around the hook. Right. So I would say to anyone, if you are thinking about having a go, just have a go. And a gentleman on the, yarn, um, the Facebook page did state that we're, we're saying these are for beginners. Now, if someone's never picked up a hook before, then I would definitely say just either get yourself a book or sit, sit and watch a few videos just to get the basics so you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But certainly, if you then feel able and you're confident with the stitches, just have a go with it. Absolutely brilliant. Now, I've done a few granny squares here, John. Right. And they are all, they have exactly the same amount of stitches in them. Right. All three of them yeah. have exactly the same amount of stitches. But different sizes. This one was, um, I didn't do, I did one chain in the corner and no chains in the side. This one I did two chains in the corner and one at the side. But this one, I doubled up the yarn and used a big hook. Okay. And remember you saying that you, the, the hooks that you've got there, you can absolutely, John, go up to a really, really big fat hook. Now, what was I watching the other day? It was a sitcom or like a Will and Grace or something like that. And they, he was crocheting a blanket and it was, the hook was huge. It was, yeah. I've got a... I was about to say, I've got a ginormous one at home. I have got a big one at home. And I think I remember telling you before, I was crocheting with seven strands. Yeah. And because it works up really, really quick, I'm a little bit, I like things to be done. As soon as I've started them, I like to finish them. But this is granny squares. I tend to make them with all my odd balls of wool and put them in a basket. And then I join them. Right. And then I make blankets with them all. You can see here that I've made with this one, I've made the cushion. Yeah. So I've made nine different granny squares. And that's what I know as granny squares, because that's what my nan used to make. But yeah. that one, it's just one big granny square. When well, you just carried just on going, going, around and going, and, going. And, and you can go, you can go as big as you want to. So you can make a blanket as a granny square. You can. And rather than sewing lots of little ones together, you can just keep going and going, and going, and make a blanket size, and it's just still one square. You can keep going as long as you want. The only thing that I would say in that is then just be prepared to perhaps join colours or join balls. Because oh yes. Some ones that I have done, they've taken me an hour per round, and we call each one of these a round. Right. Some of them have taken me an hour where it has been that big. Um, and what I would say with these ones, especially with the little, what were you calling them? Not minis, what are they called? The that's, uh, that's petite. Petite, with the petite ones, you're not going to be able to do a oh, round no, no, that big with not. them. No, no, no. But it would be perfect for the little note cover. Because if you noticed in that, you only do two rounds of a granny square. Right. So they'd be absolutely perfect mm -hmm. for that. So just be a little bit mindful that the bigger your granny square gets, you may have to join wool. That's, right. that's the If only you thing. want the petite, you need to check out. They've all, they've all, there's more in baskets than we've got stock of. Petite are these, sorry, Wendy, petite are these. So you've got which petite you're putting in? Pastel first, that's this one. This does come with a free pattern as well, don't forget. But they're the pastel shades. Or light, they're calling them light. Right, there are fewer than 30 not mm. checked out, but loads in baskets. And then the brights, which I love. Oh, over 50 people in baskets now for this one. It's called dark, they've called it dark, sorry, dark. 
And again, you get the, the free pattern inside that one. Wendy's working with colours from the next bundle, which is the mini, which each of these balls are 25 grams, and you get 20 of them. It's 100% acrylic and um, double knit. You can knit with them and you can crochet with them. There you go. Okay, right, so carry on. And double knit is, is what you would normally use because it, it's a nice weight. Okay. And especially if you're starting out in the world of crochet, even go up to an Aram, but double knit is my go-to. I always go to that. And the reason I said I'm using a five, John, is because I'm going up a hook size because I wanted people to be able to see my stitches. Okay. What you can do, and it's all about, about fluidity, it's how you want your, your square to feel. If the smaller the hook, the tighter the weave and it's going to be rigid. Right. If you go bigger, then it's going to be more fluid. Yeah. Now what you can do, unless you're making something to wear, you can use whatever hook you like. If you want a big effect, then go for a bigger hook. Yeah. Obviously, if it's something that you wear, you need, and you're following a pattern, you need to follow the swatch and the hook size. Of course, yeah. So you do yourself a little swatch, you measure it. If it's bigger, then you go down. If it's smaller, then you go up. Oh. Um, so that's all there is to it. And you did mention hexagons. Yeah. So we have got... Is that from one of these books? It is. Which one's it from? The Granny Squares. You did. I did hold it up when you... I can't think which one it was, but it doesn't look like it looks in the book because this is the wonderful, wonderful thing about this. It was is your it? felted flower bag. It's what? It was the felted flower bag. It's a, the Granny Squares on its own? Yes. Oh. And, um, but that, that's... Oh, there, 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 there. That's it, So the yes. felted flower bag. Oh, they're hexes. Yeah. And I, I just loved the pattern, so I just copied it, because yeah. it's got a diagram of how you lay your hexagons out. And, yes, it's saying that it's felted afterwards. So that's why that one looks more dense oh, okay, and a bit okay. more rigid. So you, but that, do you, you can use that for to making a, a hexy. But I just loved the pattern so much that I thought, do you know what, I'm going to do it. And I don't even think I use the right hexa hexagon. I just use another hexagon in the back of the book. So, yeah. again, they're all interchangeable. You can do exactly what you want okay, with them. Lovely. And that's, that's really easy. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to make a granny square. Right. I'm going to make a granny square like this, and I'm going to show you how to start. Now, what you were saying just a minute ago, John, you can just keep going and going and going yeah, yeah, yeah. if you want to. With these ones, and I'm just going to show you a bit later a little trick what to do when you change colour here. Well, I was going to say, how do you know which... Oh, because you've come to the end of the... End of Fine. the round. Yeah. Each of these are called a round. Right. So the first thing we're going to do... Now, I am a huge, huge lover of the magic ring. And that oh, just... here we go. <laughs> that just means... Do we wrestle the hedgehog today? <laughs> No, we're not resting. Um, oh, that's only socks. <laughs> and what that means is if you can see on the square, it's got no hole in the centre. He's got no hole. Oh. He's got no hole, John. And that's because I've worked a magic ring, I've done my stitches in the ring and I've pulled it tight. I'm not going to do that today no. because I want to get to those that have never tried one of these before. I'm going to show them a bit of an easier way. Yeah. So we're going to make our ring right. with chains. Right. Now to do that, you have your wool that's attached to the ball. Right. It's down here. Right. It's called, and I'm standing on it, that's called your working yarn. Right. And then you have your tail, which is the end. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to create a slip knot. Okay. So we lay it over our hand. Right. And then we've got our tail. So we put our tail over our working yarn. Yeah. And then with the bit, with the loop that we've got here, we just reach through and we pull our working yarn. So I'll show that again for you. So you've got your tail. And it, there's loads of other ways to do it. I'm not saying mine's the right way. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah. this is the way. You know, I've, I've done it for years. So you've got your tail. So you put your tail over your hand. Yeah. And then over the working yarn and then you reach through that little loop yeah. and pull the working yarn. Only pull, pull one, it. you only pull one through, yeah? Yes, yeah. and then you can see that I can now... But that's like a slip knot, isn't it? It is, in, yes. In your Boy Scout. Yes, I wasn't a Boy Scout. I was. I wasn't a Boy Scout. Yeah. I was a girl guide. Did you not do knots? I probably did, but I don't think I behaved in it, John. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Helen says she's been crocheting for a year, but she's never managed a granny square. Oh, she will today. <coughs> you Judith will says, today. My nan taught me to crochet. I still have some of her blankets. Uh, Alison, Marion's just joined us. I learned to crochet by doing granny squares. I now crochet all sorts of things. And then I just bought the Pro Zing crochet hook set. Thanks 
to the great guest presenters I'm learning to crochet from Julie. Maybe. Honestly, just have a go. And you'll see that I'm quite unorthodox and I do apologise for that. I'm a lefty right? and I've taught myself right-handed. So sometimes you'll see me transferring because this is my more dominant hand, right. but I actually crochet in this. So you'll right. think, what is that woman doing? And that's all that is. I mean, you think that all the time. I do, anyway, anyway, yeah, anyway. that's fine. So then all we're going to do is we're going to get our slip knot yeah. and we're going to put it over our hook and then I'm pulling the working yarn and I'm pulling it tighter. Tighten it up, yeah. You don't want it so tight that it's really rigid around mm. there and strangling it. You just want it quite loose. And then all we're going to do is we're going to create some chains. Now to work a chain, we're going to put the yarn over and that is classed as yarn over your hook. Yeah. So you pull it from the back to the front. We don't pull it under. That's a completely different method and that that's, has its use in crochet as well. But for the moment, we're going to be doing our yarn over and it's abbreviated YO in the book. So when right. it says YO, it means yarn over. So we're going to do yarn over and then we're going to pull this loop that was already on the hook over. Now I've created a chain. My slip knot is down at the bottom yeah. and I've created a chain. So I'm just going to work four or five, whatever you feel comfortable with, and I'll tell you why in a moment, is um, we're going to make a ring now. So just yarn over and pull the loop that was on the hook over. Now we need to close our chain to make a ring. So all we're going to do is do a slip knot in that first... So you've only done three? I've done four, but oh, I'll, four. Do, I'll sorry. do another No, 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 sorry, another. four. Um, but the bigger, when you're first starting out, do it bigger if you need to, yeah. because you can always go afterwards and sew the centre of your granny square up. And a lot of people don't like the magic ring because they come undone sometimes yeah. in the wash. They won't if you secure them really, really, really well. Okay. And then all we're going to do is we're going to go back into that. We're not going to go in the slip knot, because yeah. if we go in there, we're simply going to undo it. We're just going to go into that first chain, insert your hook, yarn over, and then we're going to do a slip knot, a slip stitch. And all that means is pull both of the loops over. Sorry, it's not behaving today. Right. I'm going to do that one again because okay. right. So we just put the yarn, uh, the hook in that chain, yarn over, and pull them both off. Now that's a slip stitch. Now what it has done, it's quite hard to tell, but it's created a little hole for us there. So that's my little ring. Right. That's my magic ring that's pretending to be a magic ring that really isn't one. Right, okay. So I'm going to be doing every single one of my stitches in that little ring now. So we're working in trebles. Don't be daunted by the fact that it's a treble. It is one of the taller stitches. Yeah. Now to work a trebles, we're going to be working a square around here. Right. We need to get to the height we need. So all we need to do now is do a number of chains. Now, three chain is the normal rule for trebles, but I know that I crochet quite loose, so I only do two chains. Okay. But you would normally, when it says chain three, that's what it means. You yeah. just chain three, so we just do our yarn over and pull off. So I've done two, because that has given me the height that I need for a treble, and right. I know that because um, I've you know done them loads and loads of times, but right. you might need to do a chain three here. Then all we're going to do, that now will count as our first treble. We're going to create our first side. Granny squares are made out of squares, so right. it has four sides and four corners. So our first side, and each side is made up of three trebles. We've already done one, even though it's not a real one, it's a pretend one. Right, okay. We count it as one. So we're going to do another treble into that centre ring. So we do yarn over hook first. Right. And then we insert it into that centre ring and yarn over and pull through. So we now have three loops on the hook. Right. Then we yarn over and we take the first two off and then yarn over and take the remaining two off. Oh, okay. And that is as easy, that's, that is a treble, John. Right. That's a treble. Yeah. So we've now done two trebles. So we're going to do one more to complete our first side of our square. Right. So we do yarn over before we insert yeah. into that centre ring. Then we do, so just get the tail out of the way. And you must make sure that you're using the working yarn and not the tail, yeah. or the amount of times I've actually done the tail. Yarn over and pull through. So we'll have three, three. loops on the hook. Yeah. Yarn over, take pull the first through. two, 
yeah. and yarn over and, pull through and the take the second. Thing. And that is what's giving us our height to our stitch. I'm just right. going to pull it over. With a magic ring, you see you would pull all this tight at the end, but sometimes to get them to behave, you might just need to pull them. Yeah. So I would normally do a one chain in the corner. And the reason I do this, John, is because when I work with my square, right. when you put stitches in the corners here, you're going to be putting six stitches in the, each corner and it pulls the corner a little bit bigger than it needs to be. Right. So if you've only put one chain in there, it kind of then gets in line with the other holes. Right. Whereas this one, I've done two and it just makes the holes a little bit bigger, yeah. but there's no right or no wrong right, okay. way. And for the purpose of this one, I'm going to do two chains. So I'm going to create my first corner. So I chain one and two, and now I'm going to create my second side. Right. So I'm going to do three more trebles, yeah. all in that centre ring. Okay, so over to the centre. Oh, well done. Nice bit of cometry there. No, no, I've, I've, yeah. Now you will notice that I'm not doing anything with my tension. <coughs> Normally I would put my tension on, but because I'm going quite slow, I don't need to. Don't get so bogged down with the tension. What does put your tension on? Right, then? so <coughs> with the tension, you need to have the 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 yarn wall, whatever you call it. I sometimes call it yarn because when you're working in cotton, if you call it cotton wool, people think it's something completely different. Yeah, course, yeah. So, But yarn and wool are the same thing. Although you could argue that the mixes are a bit different yeah. in some of them. Um, you need to have that going at a steady pace through your hand right. for tension. And to do that, you need to work out how you want to do it with your fingers. Everyone does it different. And I promise you that one day you'll just pick it up and it will feel right. But I put it over my thumb. Mm -hmm and then it goes behind my little finger, and then it goes up here. It may not be the same for everyone, John. So it's like threading a sewing machine, really. It is. It's, just it's kind getting of, the tension yeah. right. And that's why it's really important not to get too bogged down with things. Your first granny square may, may look hideous, mm. but it'll be your first one, and you've done it. Yeah. So please don't worry, because the more confident you get, you will get your tension oh, right. Yeah. And one day you'll just pick it up and do that. But you can see I'm doing it without. So all I'm doing is just literally trapping that wall. So we're going to do, we've done one, we're going to do two more into that centre ring. And remember, I'm going into that ring each time. So I've now created my second side. Right. So I'm now going to create my second corner. And that's simply two chains. So yarn over and pull the loop off. Right. So I've got two sides and one corner, but the second one's there, but we haven't finished it yet. So we're now going to do our third side, which are three more trebles. So we're just doing, and I'll go slow on this one. So it's yarn over before you insert it into that centre. Mm -hmm. Yarn over and pull through. Now you will see with the motion that I do, I'm doing my yarn over as I put my hook in. Yarn over, pull the first two off, and yarn over, pull the second two. And right. you can see it's starting to yeah. form now, that square. So we're going to do our next corner, which are two chains, and then we're going to do our third fourth side which are three trebles remember the sides are three trebles and then all we need to do to complete this is do our fourth corner and that is just simply two chains we now need to close it off though because yeah. at the moment it's not closed so we need to do a slip stitch in the top of your so it, if you're doing the three chain it'll be in top of the third chain as you remember I'm only doing two yeah. So I put it in the top with a slip stitch and then I've created my granny, my first part of my granny square. Yeah. So I've got so my four sides. So that's the red on, on that one there, is it? So that is the red on there. Yeah. And at the moment, it looks a bit wonky. Looks but it looks completely wonky. different. It does, doesn't it? And that's because it's not had the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth layers to put it into yeah. shape. So what we do now, and there's a couple of things um, a couple of ways a lot of people turn their work and go around the other way now you'll see on with this square here I believe that crochet has a right and a wrong side so this is quite flat it's quite hard to pick it up on the screen but that's yeah. flat and if I turn it over you can see that that's quite bobbly yeah now that's kind of my equivalent to a knit and a pearl yeah. or a stocking stitch and you know um, but a lot of people turn to go the other way to keep their square straight right I've never done that 
um, because I wanted to, I like to have two definite sides to mine, but you can always Oh, do so that. if you turn it, does that mean you have the bobbly, you'll now have a bobbly one? It's alternating. Yeah. So the first one will be pl uh, flat, yeah. then you'll have bobbly. It, you'd have to get quite close to see it, yeah. but it is still there. Mm -hmm. I like to continue in the same way all yeah. the time, but again, there's no right or wrong way here, John. And also, is this where you change colour? I'm not going to this time because I just want to show how I get to where I need to. Okay. Now, a lot of people now would just do their three chain. Yes. Someone's taking. You can't hear that at home. <laughs> um, uh, we'll just do their two chain and carry on from there. Their three chain and carry on from there. But I like to get to a corner. If you can get to a corner before you do your three chain, you're going to disguise it because right. then it will be hidden. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a slip stitch yeah. in the top of the stitches before this corner. So I've just done a slip stitch in there, yeah. and I'm just going to go a slip stitch in that corner. So now my stitch is where I want to start. Right. If I started here, it's yeah. in the wrong place. So I slip stitch over to the corner. So now I'm just going to start exactly as we did with this first one. I'm going to do, in my case, a two chain, but you'll probably be doing three to get the height of my first treble. Now, the first one is the only one that's different, John, right. because we were doing four sides and four corners. Yeah. We're still going to be doing four corners and sides, but we're going to be creating the corners that then will give us, if you kept doing the same as we've just done, it's gonna go up in a cylinder. We want it to lay nice oh, and flat. Right. Yeah, yeah. So now you can see here, we've just got three trebles and our corners, but here we've got six trebles. And then you'll see on the following round that the corners are here. So for this particular round, the cream round, we're going to be creating corners. So all we do, is we do three treble, and remember we've already done one, even though it's a pretend one. So we do three trebles. So that's the first half of our court, first half of our corner. Mm -hmm. We're then going to chain two. That's our actual corner, and then we're going to do three trebles in exactly the same place again. Julie says, "I'm loving the demo. I can already see where I've been going wrong all this time." Brilliant. And please, please tag me. Please tag me and show me your progress pictures. And again, if you need any help, just just uh, message on, on the um, Facebook page. So we've now created our corner. And now you can see it's a definite corner. Yeah. We don't worry about any sides because they're going to be created as we create the next three corners. So all we're going to do, and again, some people here do a one chain to link the two. I like mine really close knit, so I don't. I just go straight into the next corner. So we're going into this space here and we're going to do exactly the same. So every single round that I've done on here, John, yeah. all these corner stitches are exactly the same. They're three treble, two chain, three treble. They're all exactly the same. And you say the first one's a pretend one. Do you count that as one you of the three? You have to count. So your three chain, you do count as a treble. Right. You count it as one yeah. because and again, there's all different methods. Some people just sort of like hide it, but I do it as a definite treble. Yeah, okay. um, but there are, as I say, there are loads of different methods out there. So all I'm going to do is do the corner sequence. And remember the corner sequence is the same for every single round, is three treble, two chain, and three treble all in the same space. I'm getting little bits of cotton coming up with me. That's because I've got my ball on the floor. Oh. So you can now see that I've oh, yeah, yeah, created. Yeah, yeah. And as you get further and further, as I say, they do they do square themselves out. Yeah. But just by doing these corner stitches, I've now created a side stitch, a side hole here. Mm -hmm. And that's how your granny squares grows, John. Every time you do a corner stitch, it will create another side stitch. So this particular one here, I keep going round and round, and each time, the only thing that changes, the four corners will always be corners, Yeah. but what changes is the number between the corners each right. time. So you've got um, you've got your two there, and then your three, so that's that's how you grow a granny square. So do you, do you want me to, how are we for time, because... Nine, nine minutes. minutes. Would you like me to show, I'll just finish this one off. I want to know, well, it might not be part of your demo, but I, I, how do you change your colour then? 
Is that what you're going to do? That's exactly. Oh, good. That's yeah. exactly what I was going to do next. Because everyone looks, thinks of a granny square and thinks that the middle bit, then the next bit, the next bit, different colours. Yes, um, and I have um, I have a little trick that I do because if you if you have a look at someone's blanket, and you should never be critical of people's work because you know we we all do um, our best, but sometimes you can see the very obvious three chain going up mm -hmm. the blanket, especially if you haven't concealed it like we concealed it in that corner. You and there'll be loads of people at home looking at their blankets now to see yeah. if they can see their three chains. And I just have a, a it's called a dummy treble, and I just have a, a little quick. Um, tip to show you how to, to get rid of that and so as you can see already we've just done two rounds even yep. though they're squares mm -hmm. <laughs> they're two rounds but they, they're turning it into a square and then as you get bigger and bigger it's going to as I say get much neater yeah. right so I'm just going to break the yarn off and then I pull this through Ooh. sorry sorry so I'm just pulling that through and pull it right through. Just pull it right through. So I've cut it off and yeah. pull it through. And you need to leave enough of a tail to be able to weave it back in and out. Has it not? Has it not? Stopped? not if it, you pulled that, would it unravel? Now? It would. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So you need to, to. I always do it like I'm. I'm tying off when I sew. Yeah. So I would knot it and then I would weave this back in. But you want to weave it in and back and back again so that it kind of is like an S because in the wash they do have a tendency yeah, to course, pop yeah. out. So longer the longer the better. Right. When you change colour, and I'm going to go to a completely different colour. So I do apologise, Hannah, if it's not a good colour to use. <laughs> it's a pale blue. It's a pale blue. Right. So what we're going to do now? Is it one? Of, is it a little ball or a big ball? It's quite a big ball. It's but one I of think these balls. One of these balls. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. It was You're, just the, one. the thing is, it doesn't matter. Yes, you'll they're, be getting... they're all yes. <laughs> they're saying rude things in the garden. Are they saying rude things? That's yes. fine. So it's well, I've called it. I've called it a dummy treble. I don't know if that's the name for it, but I, I found this out years ago. I was sitting there one day thinking, no, you, you must be able to do something better than a three chain um, and it's just changed no one if you if you gave someone one of my blankets they would struggle to find where I started the oh, okay so all we're going to do we're going to change color now and I would always say start in a corner when you're doing this but I would always say never start in the same oh, corner so you don't twice. attach it to that you don't attach and it. and again there are different ways of doing okay. it but I personally don't oh, no, okay. but there are ways where mm. you can attach so, it so you leave that tail out now till the end I like to get a few rounds. I yeah. get because I hate sewing ends in. Absolutely right. hate it. So I would do a few rounds and then, and then sew then, three ends in. Yeah, two yeah. or three ends, yeah. and then do another few rounds and yeah. sew them okay. in. But you can leave them all to the end. No, if no, you no, want no. To. I, I just don't wonder if you had to get rid of it, sort of thing. No, okay. no, no. So, you so don't you're have starting to. completely from fresh you, now with your new. Color. I am. You do have to be a little bit careful when you go past it because at the moment it's a little it's bit open. unstable. Yeah. So if you do want to, then by all means do it now. But yes, when you do it, start in a corner because again, the more you can conceal this join, the better. Mm -hmm. And don't start in the same corner, keep starting in the same corner, change your corners up. It right. doesn't matter where you start. So what we're going to do, to, to make our dummy treble, we're going to wrap, remember we do the yarn around once when we do a normal treble, yeah. but this time we're going to wrap the yarn around twice right. before we insert it, John. Right. Now, the key thing to this is what you do here, I'm holding onto this tail tight. Because if I let it go, John, it's just going to have a mind of its own and just yeah, 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 go yeah. walkies. So you keep hold of that tail right until you've completed this yeah. step. And then all we're going to do is we're going to insert the hook into one of the corner spaces mm -hmm. and then yarn round. So now we've got our three loops on the hook as we would with a normal treble, John. Right. So we just do yarn round, take off the, the first two. two. Remember, still hold that tail yeah. and yarn round Pull and take off two. the next two. And it just does stay. It stays there. So yeah. you can now let it go. So would you like me to show that one more time? Because yeah, that is you. that's quite um, a, it isn't difficult. It's really not difficult. No, I understood that bit best out of all of them. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> right. So we just, as I say, we would normally go yarn round once with a treble, yeah. but we're going to go round twice. But you're holding the tail. But I'm holding this. I'm keeping hold of it. And then I'm going to insert it into yeah. the corner space, yarn round and yeah, pull through. Pull through. So I've now got my three loops as yeah. you would with a treble. Yeah. Yarn, yarn off, round, take the first two, two and yarn, yarn round, off and take two. two. Right. And then, and, then, and then I will do the two more trebles. I'm still holding on to it now, but as soon as you've done that second treble, yeah. you know, I would challenge anyone to see that that's not a treble yeah. because of the way you formed it. 
So that's how I always start. And then when you go round and you come back to the beginning, you would just do your slip stitch in the top of that stitch. Yeah. And I've done that with, with these. And as I say, I would challenge people to actually f say to me, where am I starting? Yeah. OK, you've got three minutes. That's it, is it? Yes. So what would you like me to do in three I minutes? I don't know. You tell me. All right, so if I just explain a little bit about the hexagons. Yes, of course. Now, the hexagons um, are um, very easy as well. And all you do, it looks like a circle yeah. until you then turn it into a hexagon. And oh, I see. OK. Yeah, it's, it's really, really easy to do. The only thing that I would um, say with hexagons, they're a little bit more challenging to make a shape out of something because obviously they're six-sided. Right. But I say jolly well have a go with it. Because but uh, we make hex quilts out of hexes and all sorts of things. That's what I was just going to don't. say to you. You could make amazing like placemats and it's just a little bit different from the norm with a hexagon, John. Yeah. Though. Now, in one of these books, it showed a round one. Now, the stall, in fact, Rebecca's got one on her stall out there. She's got a round stall out there. Oh, yeah, it? the stall thing, yeah. They're, they're worked in trebles as well, and it's literally just how you form your stitches. So if you can do a treble stitch, then there's no corners with, right. a, with um, a circle, obviously. So it's just about where you increase. Right. And that's so, so, so simple. So with a treble, because it's a high stitch, you would start with the, the, the ring like I have, yeah. but you would have 12 in that ring. If you're working in double crochet, which is a small stitch, you would have six. Right. And then with the treble, you would just increase 12 each time evenly around and then it grows and it lays flat oh. so it's it's so so versatile but anyone that's sitting there thinking oh, i can't do that you know throw away that straight crochet in that you've been trying to master because that will come i promise you yeah. and it is all about stitch count have a go at a granny square exactly and it doesn't matter if it's a bit wonky and this one's even got a teddy bear i know face that's amazing isn't it that's a different book this is a different book this is granny square's but weekend book it's well. again Please, please, please don't be put off. And actually, that teddy that you've got there, John, you can see their corners are big. Yes. So that means, all that means is they've done more chains in their corner right. to make a bigger corner. So, you know, you can even put that with one. Um, and I think, I can't really see because I haven't got my glasses on that. But I think they haven't done the traditional granny square. They've done a, a treble in each of the stitches along. And again, but that's, as you get more confidence, just... Just learn where you're putting your stitches. Definitely. And then just, you know, just play. Gushy girl, can always unpick it. Message from Jan, very quickly before we go. Wendy, that's amazing. So simple, yet how many of us will be thinking, why have I never thought of that? Thank you from Jan in Lancashire. Oh, what, the, the dummy trouble? Yeah, load, yeah. there's loads and loads of lovely messages come in for you. But you've got to oh. go now. When are you in next? <laughs> I think the 10th, I think. I think. Okay, she thinks the 10th, but just but keep, I don't even know what day it is. Guide. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's. I think, I think yeah. they do a week ahead. The one on the website, the one on the website is about a week ahead. Right. So, such a busy show. Hannah's gone very quiet. Are you? Are you eating? I'm turning you up because I can hardly hear you. There's the surprise. Got a mouthful. Yeah. Right, petite. <laughs> Mask on, not mouthful. Petite. Which colour first? Darker one first. So this is gorgeous, isn't it? Look, these are all petites. They've all got, was it 20 grams on here? No, 10 grams on here. 10 grams on there. 10 grams on each of those. And you get your free pattern in there as well. 5 99 Loads of those are gone, by the way. We've got more of all the bundles staying than we've ever had before on Yarn Lane. There'll be 10 left of those when you've all checked out. That's gorgeous. So that's the... The, they call it dark, not the bright, it's dark. Then I've got the pale pastel one, light. These are brilliant, 5 99 for all those. You get 20, 20 balls of 10 grams in there, plus your free pattern. This is how yours will arrive, all vac packed and everything like that. 5 99 Free pattern. Those are the only two bundles you get a free pattern in. Then we've got the minis. This is the middle size. So these are all 25 grams. You get 20 of them. Your colours may vary slightly, but not, not Im immensely. They'll be like this, but you might have one orange and two greens or something like that. It's what? 
Oh, yeah, and also, these are called minis, but there are some old ones you might get on. It's the same wool, the same yarn, everything like that. It's just got a different name on it. But these are called the minis. Beautiful. And they've got that great big bundle over here. Paul's going to go over to it now. I'm not getting up. Thirty-four ninety-nine. You get 20 balls of 100 grams. Again, the colours may vary slightly, but not, nothing majorly. You might, not, you might not even notice any difference if you get them. £34.99. pence. Oh, we didn't get around to the pom-pom and the caterpillar. Oh, next time. Next time. Right, so that's that bundle there. Books, Granny Squares on its own. Gorgeous. This is more your home. Like your cube storage seat cover. Or your double bed or sofa blanket. Oh, that's gorgeous. Hexagon mini, there's loads in here. Light shades. Now, I wouldn't suggest you have that as a bath mat, would you? No, no, I'm thinking about the slipping when you get out of the bath. Okay. Felted flower bag. This is beautiful. This is absolutely gorgeous. Granny Smears, four, squares, $14.99. I'm fine, I'm fine. Got to be quick now. Granny Smears weekend. 20 quick and easy crochet projects. These are more like hats and headbands and things like that. Coasters, pot holders, bunting, headbands. Oh, that's an unusual one, isn't it? The pot holders with the extra stitch in there. Hannah loves the pot. There's the round ones. The coasters, they're very retro, those cups, aren't they? Fourteen ninety nine. Where would you like to go next in the last minute? Zing crochet hook selection. There you go. Twenty six ninety nine goes from two to six. Yarn lane is next on on Friday. Oh, got Marilyn yarns again. Catherine, right? Snuggly baby knits. Try saying that with someone else's teeth in. I, now I'm in on Sunday. I wasn't meant to be in for over a week. I'm in on Sunday this week. So I will see you. Now, I'm not allowed to say it, but have a look on the website of what I'm doing on Sunday. I'm not allowed to say it, though. Not allowed to say it. Go and have a look. Anyway, thanks for your company. Thank you, Wendy. We will see you. I'll see you on Sunday. Wendy will see you. She thinks it's on the 10th. But remember, tag her in any pictures or if you've got any questions, don't send her personal messages. Just send her a message and tag her in it on the Facebook page. All right, we're going. Take care. Lots of love. See you soon.